today's Slanted Lens lesson, we're gonna show you how to make a smoke tube of death. Now, what could be more cool than that? And then how to use it in our cemetery grave digging shot. We're also going to look at the camera settings and the lighting that we use to create the grave digger image. Finally, we're going to show you how to create a very simple set so you can get your camera down low as if it's looking out of the grave at the person who's digging. So let's get started and see what we can do. In our image, we're going to want smoke all over the graveyard and be able to place it exactly where we want it. You know, a single source smoker, all the smoke emanates from one place. But with the smoke tube of death attached to it, it creates that single source smoker and turns it into a multi-source machine. So we can put smoke across a wide area, creating a mist through the trees in our cemetery. Let's take a look at how to make a smoke tube of death. We're going to start out with a roll of plastic temporary heating ducting. It's easy to find. It's a clear plastic, that comes in different lengths. It's about a foot wide tube. At Roger George Special Effects, you can get a one foot black plastic ducting and that hides a lot better. Most of the places where you'll find this temporary plastic ducting are going to be home improvement stores and they're going to have the clear. And it certainly works. First, you're going to lay your plastic tubing out on the ground exactly where you want the path to go. Here you can see how we've kind of wound it through our cemetery. Tie a knot in the end of the plastic tube. We tape a small tube to the end of our squirrel cage fan to attach the tube of death to. There's a lot of different ways you could connect your clear plastic tubing to your squirrel cage fan. We just chose to put a small piece of piping on there to make it easy to tape it on. We're now going to tape the open end of our plastic ducting to the end of the tube we hooked to our squirrel cage fan. This may not be the most official way to do it, but we found it worked best when we taped the hose coming out of the smoker to the intake side of the squirrel cage fan. This draws all the smoke into the fan and shoots it down the tube. We're using the Roscoe 1900 and taking the pipe from the 1900 and feeding it into the intake of the squirrel cage fan. We're going to give the fan a minute to inflate the tube of death and to allow the smoke to fill the entire tube. Now go along the tube of death and cut holes where you want the smoke to come out. If you get too many holes or you don't like where you placed one, simply put a piece of duct tape or gaff tape on it and it seals it right up. There isn't much pressure in this tube, so it makes it easy to open and close holes. If you want a nice mist coming through a set of trees, you can just run the tube of death for 50 or 100 feet and cut a hole every three or four feet. This is a great way to create smoke along a tree line or a mist on a large open field. It makes your one source machine into a multi-source machine. It gives you control and volume over a large area. Now let's take a look at how we set up our shot. We had to bring on our tombstones in order to create a cemetery in the backyard of my house. For this shot, we'll rearrange them and look back towards the trees. This is our first image. We're going to use camera settings that will help us to expose for the kerosene flame that's in the Gravedigger's Lantern and also allow for our strobes to be the main light source. He's holding an actual lamp with kerosene. The frame is actually very bright, so we're not going to need to open the aperture up too much or drag the shutter very long. For our camera settings, we shot at f8 at 1 30th of a second and ISO 320. I use 320 ISO because it's a lot easier to get a good exposure on the flame and I don't need as much power from the strobes. I'm shooting on the Tamron 24 to 70 millimeter lens. I'm going to shoot a variety of focal lengths. I'll be changing that up all the way through the shoot. We're now going to add a Photoflex Triton with a grid for a key light on his face. We're using a 10 degree grid to keep the light controlled and intimate just looking like it came from the lantern. I want a small pool of light on his face. I don't want it splashing all over everything. I want it to look like the lantern is lighting his face. We have a full Roscoe CTO or orange gel on this light. And when I set my color temperature to around 4,000 degrees, I get a nice warmth on his face and it doesn't feel too warm with the lantern. We then added a Dynalite head with a Photoflex small octodome. This is gonna open up the smoke and separate him from the scene on that camera left side. We added a Roscoe CTB full blue on this light to cool it off a little bit, give us depth in the background. We now added a Dynalite head from the deep camera right side to do the very same thing that the head is doing on the camera left side. It's going to backlight the smoke and create separation. We also added a full Roscoe CTB on this light, going to cool it off and again to give us more depth in the background. Our last light is a Triton on the camera right side. It's closer to the talent to give us some separation and light the side of his body, kind of give us a little rim. Put no gel on this light, I let it just be clean. Now for our last touch, we're going to add a chill box using our Roscoe 1700 smoker up front. This is going to put just a little layer of smoke onto the ground at his feet and create a really nice look. 
you go back to how to build a chill box on the slanted lens, it'll show you exactly how to build this little device to create the smoke. Here's some final images from that first setup. We're going to move on to our second setup. Earlier in the day, we built a fake grave using three boards that are about 18 inches wide. We shot them together in a U shape that'll create the illusion that we're down inside of a grave. We covered the inside of our grave with sod. Matthew had this great idea, just use sod. It looks like dirt on the reverse side. So we flipped it over, shot screws into the sod with some washers on it to hold it into place. It looks just like we cut down into dirt to create our grave. I'm now going to lay in the grass and shoot looking straight up. The talent stood on a studio box to get his feet over the top of the grave. My lens is a 16 to 35 millimeter lens. To get that wide angle look, I'm shooting at about at 17 or 18 millimeters. We now redirected the smoke over his head in order to help separate him from that night sky. With this new setup, we're going to add an umbrella with a Dynalite head behind the camera. That's going to give us just a little bit of fill light to open up the grave area in the front. Here's some of the final images from this last setup. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. It was a lot of fun to create. That smoke tube of death is really effective. You can use it in a lot of different ways. So send me some thoughts on how you're using the smoke tube of death and keep those cameras rolling and keep on clicking.